Brexit, probably the most popular word in the British Isles recently. Last week, the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union, a decision that shocked the nation and the world, and one whose consequences are still being felt. The first shock was the resignation of the British Prime Minister David Cameron, which caused and is causing major political upheaval in the country. Huge volatility in the stock markets also ensued, causing a period of global uncertainty. The value of the British pound fell by 10% to $1.35, which was its lowest level against the dollar over 30 years. This in addition to the UK losing its prized credit ratings from some of the leading agencies in the industry. They said that the result could lead to a deterioration of the UK's economic performance, including its large financial services sector, and have forecasted an abrupt slowdown in the growth in short-term Fitch. The crisis has put all eyes on Britain as it seeks to negotiate its way out of the world's largest trading bloc and other economies are anticipating the potential ramifications of the move. So what does this mean for Asia? Asia's direct exposure to the weakened UK economy and currency is limited, but more significant for some regional economies than others. Trade shares are small, though higher with Vietnam and India, and lower with South Korea, which is the least exposed to Asian economy. Japan, India and Australia all have substantial investments in the United Kingdom, largely based on the European market. Japan's currency, the yen, spiked after the vote as investors sought safety in this traditional haven. But Japan needs the yen to stay weak, so it can export its goods around the world. The Japanese finance minister Taro Aso tried to ensure financial investors in Tokyo by saying he's watching the situation urgently and his country will take action if needed to calm markets if necessary. The biggest uncertainty for Japan is how individual Asian companies with strong UK links react, such as the car groups Nissan and Toyota, both of which have manufacturing operations in England. Both sought making a formal legal complaint about the unauthorised use of its logos by the Vote Leave campaign in the UK on official election material, designed to rally support for a British exit from the European Union. For China, the European Union, which the UK was part of, represents a bigger destination for its goods than the United States. The EU is China's largest trading partner, and as China enters an era of slower growth, the timing of political and economic turmoil in the Union hasn't been welcomed. Any uncertainty in Europe will negatively impact China. As for India, Brexit had an equal shock. The Bombay Stock Exchange initially suffered nearly a 1,000 points lost, while Nifty 50 index lost more than 300 points. However, the reverse Bank of India governor Raghuram Rajan said that India's strong fundamentals will help it remain largely immune from the shock. Other currencies, such as the Australian dollar, the Malaysian ringgit and the South Korean won have all tumbled. There are other significant impacts for Asia. Singapore's trade stands at 351% of its GDP, and it amounts to 439% of Hong Kong's GDP. Growth in the global trade has been slowing in recent years, and now with Brexit, it will be even slower. For Indonesia, the UK's decision to depart from the EU is likely to postpone the negotiation process of Indonesia-EU Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. In the face of these new global headwinds, it will certainly require a lot of ambition for Asia to undertake the next round of reforms essential to lifting productivity and accelerating structural change. Brexit, according to some commentators, is becoming a setback to globalisation because one of the biggest economies in the world has stepped away from the world's largest trading bloc. This means that Asia needs effective articulation of the strategies that can stake out Asia's role in the global defence against the virus on anti-globalisation. Although Asia isn't the region hardest hit by Brexit, the result of Brexit marks the first steps in the reversal of globalisation, in which Asia could have a lot to lose. Khadija Ahmed, Asia Wired.
Joining me now to explore the fallout is Dr. Ulrich Boltz, who is head of the Department of Economics at SOAS University of London and member of the Advisory Council at the Asian Development Bank Institute in Tokyo. Uh, thank you for joining us, Dr. Boltz. Um, so in your assessment, how has Brexit affected the region so far uh, in terms of its impact on currencies, investments and trade? Well, hello. Um, pleasure to join you. Um, there obviously have been some, some uh, very immediate effects, uh, but um, the region has not been uh, affected uh, very differently from other regions. So, I mean, there have been uh, shock waves going through the global financial system, and uh, there have been different stock markets collapsing uh, in, in Asia, uh, including uh, big hits for the Nikkei in Tokyo, uh, also Hong Kong, Singapore stock markets, Korean stock markets, and so on going down. Um, and also, there have been quite big hits on a number of currencies, uh, including uh, the renminbi, uh, the Indian rupee, uh, and the Korean uh, won. Uh, but uh, other currencies, including uh, the Indonesian uh, rupee, interestingly, and also uh, the Japanese yen, actually uh, appreciated in response to uh, the Brexit. Uh, and especially uh, the, the Japanese yen had a, had a very large uh, appreciation, which caused great concerns in Tokyo. Um, but overall, I would say these were kind of short-term uh, effects and, and the uh, kind of medium-long-term effects for the Asian region uh, are likely to be much less pronounced. And uh, do you think now companies... Uh you know, Asian companies who have the headquarters in the UK, do you think uh, there's a poten potential uh, sort of fallout that they will relocate uh, away from the UK? Uh, they will be certainly considering that. I mean, uh, so in particular, Japan and India have a number of large companies uh, with big investments in the UK. And uh, so Japanese car makers, for example, who produce in the UK and export most of uh, the produced cars to the EU um, have been uh, pondering this uh, before. Um, they haven't decided on this yet, but um, uh, there probably will be uh, relocations, uh, certainly in the financial sector, uh, where um, EU uh, kind of, uh, sorry, uh, certainly in the financial sector where uh, UK based banks. Uh, will be constrained in, in uh, operating across the EU single market. Um, so there will be likely movements uh, to Paris and Frankfurt. Uh, but there may also be some movements uh, from, from uh, London to Asian financial centres, uh, including Singapore and Hong Kong. Uh, HSBC, for example, uh, a few months ago, uh, contemplated anyway uh, relocating uh, its headquarters to Hong Kong and decided against it. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is uh, under review again. And do you think uh, there will be a benefit to Asian countries now because uh, they will be able to push for the more direct bilateral uh, trade ties with the UK uh, without all the hassle uh, with the EU members? Well, I, I don't see any benefits really uh, for Asia in this. Uh, I mean, first of all, I think the, the negative trade effects uh, from Brexit for Asian countries will be uh, rather small, even if it's very likely now that the UK will go into a deep and prolonged recession, uh, given that there will be substantial uncertainty for possibly years to come. Um, but uh, trade with the UK is not that important uh, for most Asian countries. So for uh, uh, Asia as a whole, um, uh, trade with, with the UK uh, accounts for um, around 0.7% of regional GDP. So it's really a rather marginal number. So even if the UK enters a deep recession, uh, this will not have very big impact on trade uh, uh, for the region as a whole. Uh, there are a few countries uh, for whom trade with the UK is more important, uh, Cambodia, uh, most notably, which has more than 5% of its exports going to the UK, also Vietnam with around 3%, and Hong Kong with around 2%. But for the other countries, really, trade with the UK is not that important. 
Uh, what matters much more is trade with, with the rest of the EU, uh, big economies like Germany, so, oh. France, and so on. And uh, so it's also more uh, kind of negative effects on, on EU countries, on the rest of the EU, uh, that could cause trouble. So if, if, if the UK Brexit uh, causes um, a recession in, 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 in uh, the EU, which I don't think it will, but it will, will have a negative effect on growth for sure, um, then this would feed back into uh, to Asia. So on, um, that, so on that point, sorry to, sorry to disturb, um, in terms of China, uh, I know you said uh, there'll be minimal uh, impact in terms of trade, but in terms of as a political player, uh, the UK has been a massive backer uh, with China uh, for it to get a free trade deal with the EU. Um, do you think it will complicate uh, this sort of process now? without the UK? Oh, uh, you're totally right. Uh, China, uh, um, or Britain, has been a, a kind of strategic ally for China uh, in, in the EU, and this ally is not lost. Um, but for the Chinese, having trade deals with the UK alone is not that interesting, really. I mean, uh, OK, the UK is still uh, the fifth largest economy in the world. Um, but uh, uh, the scope for, for greater exports uh, from China to the UK is not that great. Um, so uh, what really matters for, for China is having kind of open access to, to the EU at large. And um, kind of the chance of getting a good trade deal with the EU uh, have diminished a little bit now, uh, with the UK out of the game. Um, so uh, I definitely don't see any great benefits. I mean, even if you think in kind of geopolitical terms, I mean, there has been uh, uh, having people saying uh, uh, Russia and China will, will uh, kind of be geopolitical winners of this. For Russia, this may be true, but I don't see this uh, being true for China because China um, is really benefiting from a strong open Europe and um, also as a counterweight uh, to the uh, US. Um, and uh, so I don't really see any benefits uh, for Asia in this respect. And uh, you refer to um, uh, Asian investment in the UK. Uh, this is certainly much less uh, strategic and interesting now. Um, so uh, also given the uncertainty, this will go down, but this will have a negative impact on the UK first and foremost. And uh, so the US, UK really, uh, I think, is, 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 uh, has shot itself in the foot. And uh, for Asia, um, it's not nice, but, but uh, the effects will be so, limited. I'm so saying. we're just running out of time. Um, so quickly, um, so some have said uh, on, the, on the same sort of theme uh, that Brexit represents a slowdown uh, of the, and maybe the first steps of a reversal uh, of the globalization that's defined, the mar defined markets in recent decades. Uh, because when one of the biggest economies in the world uh, steps back from the world's largest trading bloc, uh, it's a pretty powerful statement, uh, isn't it? Uh, your thoughts? It is, but uh, we need to be clear. Globalization has been somewhat in reverse already uh, since 2008 with the global financial crisis. Uh, trade, global uh, trade has, has uh, not grown uh, the way it, it grew before. Um, and this really causes and, and has been causing uh, problems also for uh, Asia, which has uh, to a large extent relied in its growth model or the different countries have relied in their growth models uh, on uh, um, growing exports to EU markets. And um, the UK pulling out of this um, may be one more element in, in this uh, kind of slowdown or maybe even unwinding of, of uh, uh, globalization. Um, but it really depends very much on how uh, kind of the EU responds and, and how also the political dynamics within the different countries uh, develop. Uh, there's certainly a worst case scenario uh, with kind of this populist Brexit uh, uh, win in the UK, uh, fueling uh, similar tendencies in France with, with uh, uh, um, uh, Front National or in other EU countries uh, kind of stirring nationalism and, and, and uh, 
Uh, so it's very important um, kind of that uh, we try to, to really promote uh, international cooperation uh, and, and uh, kind of fight these nationalistic tendencies. Um, and uh, just the last point uh, before you cut me off I'd like to mention is that um, uh, maybe there are there's one one good side effect uh, for Asians, um, and that is uh, the weak pound uh, will make uh, travel to the UK much more cheaper, and also uh, studying in the UK uh, will be a great deal de uh, a great deal cheaper. So um, I welcome all applications uh, from from Asia to uh, my and other universities. Uh, thank you, Dr. Votes from SOAS University of London for joining us, uh, but that's the end of this segment. Uh, so now we look at the rest of the talking points this week. Now McDonald fans in Singapore are loving it, with the introduction of local flavours into the brand's global menu. From Thursday this week in the city-state, McDonald's launched the menu featuring flavours such as salted egg yolk, pepper crab and gula malacca. So how do these fit into the menu? The salted egg yolk is incorporated into the chicken burger with pepper crab put into a shaker which you can dust over, twist and shake fries. The famous pudding, the gula malacca, is now transformed into a McFlurry with added layer cake bites. Two other items will also be available for a limited time the spicy McNuggets and the banana pie, which will both be making a comeback. But you have to hurry, it's for a limited time only. After the terrible attacks this week in the city of Istanbul in Turkey, the wider Muslim community has been showing their solidarity. In Pakistan, the hashtag PakTurkStandUnited started trending on Twitter with many sharing images of solidarity. Images of both of the nation's flags have been a popular feature with both featuring the commonly understood symbol of Islam, the star and crescent moon. Rahil Amjad said that the blast in Turkey was as saddening and heartbreaking as seeing blasts in his own homeland. Mohammed Mehtab added, Turkish brothers be patient, Allah is with us, we will be successful inshallah. Others have picked on the selective outrage that parts of the global media and community have been displaying. Mohammed Faisal tweeted this picture saying, True story of the world media, all my thoughts go out to the victims and their families. Now a new hashtag conversation launched on Tuesday in the United States and got global Asians talking. Termed being Asian, it's got many writing what it's like to be Asian and the racism that comes with it. So what did they say? Illy said that being Asian meant that parents were forever comparing you with everyone's children. Another tweeter added that rice was air, the light, life and everything. A man added that being Asian meant always reminding people that South Asians are also part of Asia and it is not just China and Japan. Marco Javier added a more political point, saying being Asian meant being told, wow, your English is perfect all the time, as if Asian countries weren't colonised by the West. Hashtag being Asian was first tweeted out by 17-year-old Michael Taru on Tuesday afternoon, aiming to connect Asian Americans online in an effort to show the similarities and the diversity among the Asian American experience. Taru said that the hashtag came out during a group chat on Twitter with some of his peers, including Twitter user at Shailness, who he credits with creating the hashtag. He said confronting issues such as the racism we face and the internalised racism it has caused in many of us is important as it helps us move forward. We also believed it was very important we discuss the issues highly prevalent in our communities, such as racism against one another, colorism and anti-blackness. <laughs> 